Uh, let's move on to our next subject today, and that is uh, Minnesota. We had them be able to pass this bill in their government, mm -hmm. legislators, and then it went to the governor's desk where the governor vetoed it. And trust me, Uber was going hardcore at trying to get it. Every, every possible avenue they took, oh, you're going to become employees. Oh, we're going to pull out of uh, Minnesota altogether, except we're going to stay in you know, the big city and that's it. We're going to stay in the Twin Cities and everybody else. The question is, are they telling the truth or are they lying? But before we ha oh, get into that, we have a guest. Harry, the rideshare guy, is right here. What's going on, Harry? What's up, guys? Just got out of uh, Uber's headquarters and, uh, you know, made it on over to the live chat just in time. So thanks for having me on. <laughs> Hollywood Harry is here. Hold on a second. So, so Chris, do you that know was a that? Joke, you by the way, for do you know listening. that you don't have a life, Chris? <laughs> hey, he was talking to you. <laughs> no, no, I wasn't no, talking no. shit to Chris, just Sergio. Oh, just me. Okay, all right. <laughs> So, yeah, I, you know why I don't have a life? Because, you know, you will proudly read in LA Times tomorrow how many hundreds of millions of dollars we got gig workers. Then you'll figure out why I don't have a life. But you know what? I'm willing to exchange whatever I have left for gig workers' benefits. So, now, welcome All to right. the show, Harry. What brings you here? <laughs> uh, thanks for having me on. No, I think uh, I wanted to come on because I think the Minnesota bill was a good example where honestly, I think both sides like Uber and Lyft, obviously, you know, they're saying, oh, we're going to pull out, we're going to do this, we're going to do that. Um, and then, you know, but a lot of the supporters of the bill, I think were pretty way off too. you know, saying that like, oh, my God, we can get paid more. Nothing's going to change. Everything's going to be great. Right. And I think that's also bullshit. So I think for me, I'm probably somewhere in the middle um, and just wanted to sort of share uh, that perspective. And yeah, probably will come off a bit as defending Uber. So I'm happy to defend Uber. Uh, you know, not everything they said or did in regards to this bill, but, uh, you know, I'm happy to provide uh, that perspective and, you know, we can argue and we'll see uh, if you can convince me by the end of uh, the 15 minutes. I know you like um, to talk, so maybe I'll be able well, to get at least a word. You, you just wasted a minute, didn't say anything. So hold on a second. <laughs> so I said, I, you know, uh, you, you put a video out short. I put a short out. Did you read the bill? You said you didn't read the bill because you had I didn't read the bill. Message. If you didn't read the bill, why even put the video out? But that's a different story. So I well, do you think most people read Here, the bill? This was Harry, hey, hold on. This was a carbon copy of Seattle. I'm gonna keep it short. I know I don't I like to talk, but this was the carbon copy of Seattle, except that there was one huge difference, one massive difference, which will require for you to read the bill to understand why this is how why why it happened, why the guy vetoed the bill. It wasn't because of high rates. Look, Uber has raised their rates. You know, around the country by 30, 40 percent. Yipit data. I pay Yipit data 600 bucks a month to get like live data out of you. Do so, yeah, absolutely. I do. I, some of your money I spent on that, but just to get the feel of what's happening, right? Probably get it. You know who they are. So if you don't believe their, you know, uh, the the numbers, then it's a different story. But you know, they have done this. They have played this boo hoo hoo game for too long for me, for my liking. Meaning we're going to either pull out, okay? That you're not going to pull out, but. When, it, when time came to share the wealth with, with the drivers, which is raising the fares a little bit, I, it, it seemed like they don't like that. However, the biggest difference, Harry, in between Seattle and Minnesota was the bill, first of all, got watered down. It started at two twenty five and 60 cents. What's the biggest difference? <laughs> the biggest difference? Okay, can you put that screenshot up, uh, Chris, the one with the bill where it says Section 8? This one right here? That's right there. So where it says Section 8... Harry, if you can read that, the line item 613 to 617. You know what the Minnesota drivers did not give that Seattle drivers gave and got the high rates and all the benefits? Right. They did not give their right to unionize, and they did not give their right for collective bargaining. And Uber does not Well, I mean, I like think that. it was more that they, you know, the other bills that we've seen, like in places in Washington, basically said in California, drivers are going to get some additional benefits, but they are going to be designated by the law as independent contractors, yes. right? That's and the only thing. By this, they did not give it up. And then right. and that's the said, main thing that the companies care about, right? Yep. Like they well, feel I, I, I think it was a strategic mistake. They shouldn't have given that up and got the higher rates and yeah. build on it. I as agree. I think, the, 
I think the sort of proponents of this bill got a little too aggressive. I think that they could have passed this bill if they would have said that, you know, drivers are independent contractors and they get the higher rates and the deactivation. I think they got too aggressive. And let's be frank, Minnesota, we've got our buddy Joe in Minnesota, but this is not a top tier market, right? So Uber is, you know, willing to be more aggressive there. Like, I don't know. I don't know for sure that they would have pulled out, but I do think it, you know, if it would have passed, it would have been a pretty bad precedent for the companies and they would not have liked that, right? Because they were basically giving up a lot but not getting anything well so that they to actually me was actually of... but you know actually from where the bill started just to pass the senate <clears throat> the head of workers comp part in this bill they took that out as well basically they watered the bill down from much higher rates literally 225 and 60 cents down to 145 and 34 within the twin cities area and they took out the last second to pass the senate they took out the workers comp part so basically they watered it down to high rates higher rates than before and, and on just the activation protection. They passed the Senate that way. And then, of course, we know what happened. The governor vetoed it. But I think they made a huge strategic mistake. The mistake was what Seattle drivers did not do, which was, yes, we are going to give the independent contractor rights and we're going to stay independent. We're not going to form a union. And, and most drivers, you know, want to stay independent anyway. I mean, we do yeah. our surveys, as you know, 80 percent, you know, 70 percent want to stay independent. If they had done that, we would not be talking about this today. However, they made a strategic mistake. They pushed a little bit on that. And Uber used all the tools in the arsenal, as you saw, you know, the, you, you're, you're going to become an employee. That's exactly why they put that. Well, let's look at this screenshot. What does it say? It says Uber will operate as normal throughout Minnesota. Which was this was right after a bill that when, would have doubled the cost of rideshare. I mean, so I think we both would agree the cost would have gone up, right? Obviously, if they're paying drivers more, the yeah. cost to passengers will go up, right? Well, that's that's Is it other double. Yeah, I don't know, but it will go up, right? Oh, well, it will go up. However, you know what? I, I thought you were going to bring Josh Gold or Freddie Goldstein with you because they have the data. Do you have the data? <laughs> Can we get the data truly? Because every single time. All they I, say, I don't think oh, we need the data to use up. your common sense, up. right? If drivers get paid more, they obviously have to pay charge passengers more. You think Uber is going to take less money? Nope. They're barely profitable. I agree. But, you know, the only place that we can we have a precedent on this is Seattle and Washington State. I would really love to know, not to argue with you or make a point. I would really love to know what has happened in Seattle over the last 18 months since they had the higher rates. Has the demand collapsed? Has it got, gotten crushed? I mean, what's happening? Are drivers making more money? What is their utilization rate? Uber knows all this. I don't know why yeah. they won't release it because all they do is I mean, all rates are going to go up. You're going to lose your flexibility. You're going to lose your freedom. I get that. But show me the money. Where's I don't think the they need the to. I mean, I guess if I'm putting myself in Uber's shoes, I don't think they need to to make a compelling case. That's my point, right? I think that both sides. Easy. Both sides are sort of saying, oh, you know, Uber's saying, oh, you know, costs are going to go way up. Like, I'm agreeing with you right now. Double the cost of rideshare? I don't know. That seems no. extreme to me. I think increase the cost of rideshare would be a 100% accurate statement. Double. No doubt. And um, you know what? I'll give you that. You don't know. Because... I don't know. And I mean, when you think about it, too, right, there's a certain number. Like, let's go back to, you know, a year ago before the bill passed in Washington, right? There was a certain number of drivers. There were a certain number of rides happening every day. And there was already an existing growth rate, right? Let's let's say the market was recovering by, you know, 5%, right? They were still trying to get back to pre-COVID numbers, right? So there's like a lot of different factors. So I think it, even if you had the data, I think it would be really hard, you know, to still parse and understand like, hey, was this, you know, was it at a 5% growth rate? And now it's at 3%, right? Because of that increase in fares. But we also had this huge thing for three years called COVID, right? Where, you know, that like impacted things. So I don't know. I think you're like hoping for the data, you know, but the data isn't always you know, black and white, and it isn't always no, I, I get know, abundantly that. clear. I, I fully get that, but, you know, like, we had... I, I don't know who Michael is, but I appreciate you chiming in. He says, we saw no change in ride count. Do we know that, I mean, you know, maybe because well, that's... In his personal, you know, maybe in his personal case, we don't know. But we had the Seattle driver, Walt, you know, twice on. You know, he said demand is really not down as far as his personal numbers are concerned. And the, the important thing is, he goes, I'm making a little bit more money online time but my mm -hmm. overall profitability is through the roof, meaning he's driving yeah. less miles, he's doing less trips. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, more money. that's a good point. I think that yeah. seems like a good thing to me, right? So if they yeah. are paying, you know, higher in the state of Washington, you know, as long as it's not too much, I guess, like, what are, like, for example, what were they paying in Washington and what did it bump up to? And how does that compare to Minnesota? Washington rates literally doubled. Actually, they had an inflation adjustment January 1 of this year, another one. 
Mm-hmm. So at the moment, they're 150 a mile and 64 cents a minute. Just on the minute side, they're at 40 bucks an hour. Okay. Mm-hmm. And utilization rates are running, acceptance rates are running about 93% on average from all the, the Seattle drivers that I've spoken to because there's no reason to decline <laughs> at those rates. I, why would I decline any trips? Right. And the other thing is that's happening is utilization is a little bit lower. They said their own personal ones again, not overall. Right. They're at yeah. like 63, 64% versus 70%. But the rates were are almost 60%, 70% higher than what they used to have. Yeah. Now, well, in- I, I not to interrupt. I see a comment in here from Sans Alchemy. Some other channel was saying the same thing. Increasing the prices would oversaturate the market, right? Like at a certain point, right? If you increase the rates, right? There is a certain point where that would have a negative impact on demand and bring drive too many drivers onto the platform, right? If drivers are making, you know, let's say 15 to $20, 15 to $25 an hour in Minnesota right now, you increase the rates by double and they make 50% more. Okay. You know, is that enough to start, you know, now it's like looking like a pretty good job, right? If you can make yeah. 20, you know, 22 to $40 an hour. I just shared a screenshot of a driver with you who did 50 hours last week in Detroit. I think it's kind of a comparable market maybe to yeah. Minnesota. I don't know Midwest East too well. He made over $2,000. He made $50 an hour and that was last week in Minnesota, right? So right. Um, but, but let's not mix that up. What I, All I'm saying to you is that, yes, you know, oversaturation is what Uber wants anyway from the first day. Look. They have demand. I mean, I am, I am, my, my biggest concern is when they do the crying game, you know, they go, oh, rates are going to go up. Flexibility is going to go down. Your demand is going to go down. I get that. I get that. that elasticity when it comes to, yeah. you know, what you can charge a you know, passenger is important. However, have they been charging? I mean, you're in LA. You take a lot of Uber tips, I'm sure. Have they been charging a lot more in LA over the last three years since 2019, since they went public? Yes, they are. 30 to 40 percent. I mean, I take Uber trips, the same 10 mile trip that I used to take that was 10 bucks, that was 20 bucks. I mean, it is a fact. And now when it when time comes to share the wealth with the drivers, they're just kind of really pushing hard not to do it. Yeah. And, you know, you watch their numbers, their global take rate, 29 percent at all time highs. That doesn't happen with charge a lot, pay as yeah. little as you I th- can. I think you're right. No, the data has shown, you know, that Uber is charging more per ride. Passengers are still taking rides and they're still going. But yeah, the companies aren't really sharing the well. So I think then you and I are on the same page. Uber can charge, oh, yeah. you know, let's say up to 50% more on the rides and potentially pass that on that, you know, some of those earnings on to drivers so that they make more without a huge impact on demand eventually you know if they pay two three four x right no, like that's, if they raise that's, the rates that's by, not what they're asking for though. right that's i know i'm just saying right that that would be the limit maybe there's some limit where you know if they start doing too much then more drivers would come onto the platform of um course. i think the key thing in minnesota was that uh, you know i think they got too aggressive right and that they didn't ask for that independent contractor status yep. i'm curious for everyone uh, talking shit in the chat right now if uh you know they would so would have supported the bill in the exact same way you know with the rates and with the deactivation, if it also said that drivers, uh, you know, were going to remain independent contractors, I feel like that would have been a bill that I would have been 100% uh, behind. I think I think that that's the strategic uh, I mean, error that they made. And 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 you know, I was like, I was first. I'm kind of behind like, the bill as it is, to be honest. I think it's just more yeah. that like I, I thought it wasn't going to pass because of that. Yeah, well, I mean, but no, you didn't know that about the Section Eight part, right? Because I, I was like scratching my head. I go, they watered this no, thing I didn't down know about so that much. Part. That was what. That was the one thing. I, that was the one thing I did know about the bill. <laughs> yeah, well, well, they okay, okay. So my thing, my thing always was like, okay, higher rates are good for drivers. Unjust deactivation is good, but they watered it down a lot. They felt like they gave up a lot, right? Because literally, if you read the original bill. It has yeah. so many more things in there that I go, there's not a chance this thing is going to pass. Well, I mean, but that's then, typical negotiating. You ask for a lot, they ask for nothing, and then you yeah, get somewhere in the middle, yeah, right? Yeah. But but I, on the oversaturation part, by the way, I agree with you that if... I mean, hasn't oversaturation been a big complaint from drivers over been, the past year? I see app ride saying they have too many drivers in every market. That's why people complain but so that's much. Macroeconomics, that, that's macroeconomics. That's macroeconomics. That has but I mean, if, to do with higher So let's rates say in anymore. Minnesota, if they were to increase the rates, right, wouldn't that bring more... Now it's now people can potentially make more would uh, that bring more yeah. drivers on the road potentially but you know as you know our crowd is very transitory people do it for four months and close their gaps and then go back to a w2 or whatever they do i mean to me you know i well, what is it uber says 20 percent of ride share drivers are full-timers right that depend for their whole livelihood to this yeah or gig workers right so to me it's like that's not really that big of a deal i mean oversaturation ebbs and flows and right now it's at a peak because of macroeconomic conditions inflation is hard 
I'm just concerned that, look, the drivers lost two battles last month and a half. One was in Colorado, which was the transparency bill, which two Democrats went, went against the Democratic-sponsored bill. And this one now, a Democratic governor issuing um, a veto, first first veto, you know, in his career um, against against the Democratic sponsored bill. Now, my my downside of this is if we cannot pass these things, what can we pass as drivers? How can we fight? But then I mean, this I, wasn't a good bill. They screwed up. The proponents of this bill screwed up. They got way too aggressive. Well, um, aggressive being like, you know, <laughs> uh, uh, how is that really? I mean, I don't know. They watered it down so much. They're only left with two things. Really? I rate. mean, I think if they would have gotten higher per mile per minute rates and then the deactivation, I think that would have been two pretty huge wins. I mean, that's, you know, oh, I agree like on that, on that one, I agree with you. But because I about they, you know, them wanting to unionize or not giving collective bargaining rights broke the back of the camel. And that's what happened. And and, you know, now there is a commission like, you know, we did another commission like a hole in the head. Right. I mean, now they're going to study it again until 2024. Now we're going to sit down and talk again. You know, I, you know, I, the Seattle model was almost there and then they didn't give up the, you know, independent contractor stuff and, you know, they failed. And I'm I'm disappointed, but I think war goes on. You know, there are a lot of these bills coming up, Harry. I know you don't follow this stuff as closely as you used to. But there is bills in Illinois now. There is bill in. Oh, I follow it all pretty closely. I mean, I think the the crux of it is the companies all want independent contractor status, and you know, I mean, you can agree or disagree with that part, but that's what the companies are fighting for, and that's what they want, and they're willing to give up some. You know, in California, they sort of gave up, you know, more of a guaranteed earnings, right? So they guarantee pay during periods two and three. And, you know, in New York City, which is kind of unique, right, they sort of do the an actual minimum wage based off utilization. Um, but, you know, like I said, in New York City, right, that model you know, I guess, I guess to me, like, I just want everyone to understand, right, that like right now in the current system, you know, like if you're making it work and doing really well, like anytime they dumb it down, right, like anytime they create a floor, that's going to help other drivers and hurt some drivers, right? Well, so, point, yeah. I mean, I think that just have to understand, right, like when they flip to flat rate surge pricing, right, now it's like, okay, longer trips aren't as good. Now you got to do short. You have to just have to, you know, sort of like no one, well, no one's gonna save you. <laughs> you know well, what I mean? You gotta that, figure no, this out on your part own. Of it, you know that part of it would do here really well. Inform and educate, and then you gotta make your own decisions. You know, I'm, I'm, um, yeah. You know, I, that that's the governor ex, governor's excuse that he put out there that few hundred people who whose rides are paid for actually. You know, when you do yeah, not no, that, lift, that's that's bullshit. It was because bullshit. you know Uber and Lyft bullshit. were lobbying yeah. super hard behind the scenes. Yeah, super and, hard. Yeah. You know, um, I think uh, yeah. I mean that's why. Yeah. So and, and, you know, all this stuff helps, by the way, you know, their huge power is obviously being able to push whatever they want to push through the app, you know, uh, to the drivers and, and the passengers simultaneously. And that's a huge advantage. And, you know, maybe we should create our own RSG app and push messages to drivers <laughs> constantly. I mean, I, I don't I don't really have a problem with that. I mean, it's their drivers, their users. They can say whatever the hell they want to them, whether it's true or false. I mean, I think it's on, you know drivers, passengers, or us, you know, to call them out on their bullshit, right? Like, you're at risk of becoming an employee, right? There was nothing that said, you know, drivers would become employees, right? So that I don't agree with the bill would double the cost of ride share. We know that's not true, but it might, okay. you know, increase well, the there cost is, of ride share. There's a lot of maize and mites in their in their language, obviously, which they have to keep it that way. But you know, when they talk I don't about think there are actually a lot of, I think there should be more <laughs> maize yeah. and might. It says you're at risk. I mean, at risk, I guess, but it says this bill would double the cost of rideshare. I don't yeah. think that's true. No. Right. Well, um, but, but you know why, why Harry, the why one, one thing that I, I really have to stay with, with the community here is this, you know, what is, we do our surveys. What is the top complaint when it comes over the last five years? What has been the top complaint? Earnings, right? Yeah. Now people go earnings, earnings, earnings. This was a chance to get more earnings. I'm not sure why they didn't give up the collective bargaining rights. I don't know. Um, yeah. And, and and I I think that would have been I a mean, good so start. Think, you know, yeah, you have something of then nothing. Right now they have nothing. They're back to score one. Right. And I'm like, yeah. now it's tough to build some. You know, same momentum because you had momentum, and then you didn't keep it. Now I have a quick question before you go. Well, let me, let, me just, let, me just wrap up. let me just wrap up, Sergio. I guess what I would say is like, I like this bill. I think that 
they just screwed up by not asking for independent contractors. Like I want drivers to get paid more. And so to me, it's more about like, Hey, next time this type of bill comes up, like do a better job. Right. Like that, that's, that's sort of, I think what like is kind of missing from the conversation. Right. <laughs> so you're, um, you're admitting, you're admitting that you were wrong. You did not watch the, you did not read the bill. Number one. Number well, two, I'm admitting that I did not read the bill. Am I admitting? What am I? Admit, what was I wrong? Okay, what else? Okay, you said you said you said you, today you said you didn't read the bill, but then you put the video out saying that there is minimum wage floor, this and that, which was not factual. But I yeah, know you're, you're right. Were I, to that admit. I was that part I was wrong about. I think okay. the 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 point though that I was trying to make was basically if you pay drivers more, that's a good thing. There may be less rides, but I think what you're saying, and I think what you've kind of convinced me of, is you're right that they're probably like, I would rather risk it. You know what I mean? Like let's pay drivers more and see what happens. And if it turns out that there's way less rides and then Uber, you know, brings the data to prove that or show that, then that's on them. So like, until, to me, look, this until, is, this until they bring like, the data, until they bring the data about, Oh, fares are going to double and demand right. is I mean, going to get crushed. Not, I mean, that's hearsay too. You're going to be right. waiting a long time for that. So don't yeah. get your hopes no, up for that. I anytime that. Soon. I that. But that's hearsay. But so hold on. Do I would follow? say this bill, like to me, okay that you, you've convinced me that makes sense i'm on your side these guys fucked up they should have done a better job though pushing you know i think if they would have done independent contractor the bill would have passed drivers in minnesota would have been getting paid more and that's sort of what i want our audience to hear is like hey if you're going out like if you really want to be employee that's fine you should fight for that if you really <sighs> want higher pay and you know you know to be prevented from being unfairly deactivated you should have pushed for a bill like this but with independent contractor enshrined in the legislation you'll get paid more and have deactivation protection i i agree on that one for sure and okay so um did you read the comments on the video that you put up on friday yeah they basically all attacked me and said uber was paying me this and that but not one single comment actually had a decent had an a, an argument period as to why okay, i was wrong hold on hold on hold on we have one minute Shut okay up. hold on I don't do you know, follow their better job of do, do you follow the bk on you. twitter yeah okay do you know what i know i'm sure he's not running his own twitter account somebody's doing uh, i think it. he does you think so yeah okay I so, mean, you can sort of tell you know, by the tweets. I, I looked at it's... the percentage of shit comments you got versus shit comments he gets when he tweets. It was about equal. You guys are about 98%. Okay. <laughs> What's the point? <laughs> no, I'm just saying it's like you guys are at that level that, you know, you, you unilateral hate. <laughs> it's like, you know, look at Harry. We're trying to build a community here. You put a video like that. And then, and then I go like, now I have to respond to this guy. It's like, why? Why am I doing this, right? You know you are for the drivers. Why don't you say it to all our viewers here? I am for the drivers. Go ahead, say uh, it. Obviously, I'm for the drivers. I've run a, a channel and a blog called The Rideshare Guy for the past 10 years where we've you know, paid out lots of money to people like Sergio who are very expensive and Chris and then uh, supported the what? community. <laughs> <laughs> don't we give out 100? I don't, I don't know. Every time we do a show, the thousands of dollars come out of my bank account with Amazon gift certificates and $100 this and that. 25 so. bucks. The guy just put 50 bucks, bro. Come on. The guy just 50 bucks super chat before you showed up. That's yeah, just I know. What? about to do surgery why is he paying us i feel like we should be helping him out yeah exactly he's having triple so let me give you a good tomorrow. example uh hopefully i'm these aren't like your top fans because like stranger things you harry you need to stop being uber's robot first of yeah. all you know what i mean it's it's just like the arguments are so weak right like oh harry you're being paid by uber like feel free you know if you have a problem with you know the actual substance of the argument i mean i know it's youtube and uh you know commenters yeah. on the internet so i'm not yeah. having high hopes but you know when i discuss it you know when i discuss issues that's sort of the the type of conversation i want to have right i want to talk more about hey, like hey what's the actual substance of the bill like how might this help how might this not you know why is uber full of shit when why are you know some of the proponents of the bill like well, why are some of them full of shit or what could they have done better so the next time around right like i want the next Next bill that gets brought to a state like i would love to see independent contractor enshrined higher pay for drivers and deactivation uh you know a third-party deactivation center uh that to me seems uh you know really positive for the drivers and i mean i think i was the one who you know put a spotlight on seattle on washington i had kareem from the office of you know labor standards on my podcast and you know then we set up a couple of them to come on show me the money club so uh yeah all right, thanks for watching. That short little clip was from our live stream, Show Me the Money Club with Sergio and myself, Tuesdays, 6 p.m. Eastern, 
3 p.m. Pacific. Make sure you subscribe, turn on all notifications so you'll be notified when we go live, as well as all of our awesome content. Make sure to check out this video right here, which will take you to the entire live stream, or check out this video right there. All right, drive smart, everyone.